ladies and gentlemen, this is Coach Kimball. I'm going to be talking to you about the information that we covered at our parent meeting on February 23rd. If you were not able to make it to that meeting, then this video is specifically designed for you. First of all, welcome to the season. I'm very excited about what we're going to be able to do this season. We're going to try some very new, interesting, uh, maybe some crazy types of things this year, and I look forward to seeing how that's going to play out with our season. So again, welcome to the season, and we hope that everything is going to be a fantastic experience for all of you. What I'm going to be doing with you now is going through a list of all of the things that we talked about last night. I am going to go ahead and use the board to kind of talk back and forth with some things. Uh, what I have on the screen is a version of the document that you have access to. Your daughters, uh, all the girls that are on the Google Classroom page and have the Google uh, account, uh, it, this document has been shared with all of you, so you can access this material. There are hyperlinks in here, so I'm just going to kind of walk through it very quickly. And then if you have any questions about any of the information that I'm going to cover here, by all means, you can email me, you can text me, you have my information. My email is here, Coach Rachel's uh, email is there. She is going to be our assistant coach again this year. We have so a team website. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Again, whenever you access this document, uh, the girls can share this with you. There's links on here. This takes you first to our team website. This is kind of the big idea location. Uh, some of the permanent information is there. I don't update this every day. It's not frequently updated, although you do have access to the calendar there, and that is pretty current because I can access that anywhere. I can uh, update that on my phone if I need to. So if there's changes to the season, if there's changes to the schedule or practice things, that's all there and you have access to that. So the website is good for you to kind of get a lot of information and I'm, we're going to be going back and forth with this site here uh, as we go. Alright, let's get into the important information. First of all, legal responsibilities. We have documents that we have to have recorded. First of all, your daughters all have to have their physical current. It has to be recorded in with uh, Miss Student in the nurse's office and with Miss Deanna Bridgewater. So make sure that if your daughter has not taken her physical, make sure that gets done really sometime this week because we start on Monday. Uh, the activity fee needs to be paid. That is $75. That's for all activities. Uh, each activity is $75. So make sure that that is current. Again, Deanna Bridgewater updates me pretty much every week and lets me know who needs to make payments. And if I need to contact you, uh, I can do that through email or through text later. There is an IHSA Sports Medicine Acknowledgement and Consent Form. That is basically the drug form that we talk about here. If any state representative wants to come in, IHSA wants to come in and do any drug testing on our girls, we have to have permission slips on file so that they can do that without having to go through a bunch of extra paperwork. If that paperwork is not on file and they come in to drug test our players, and your daughter does not have that form in, then that automatically excludes her from participation uh, with the team. We really don't run into any problems with that except at the state series or beyond sectional kinds of things. So if we get that far, which I hope we do, then uh, we really need to make sure that that is done because they will spot check and that's pretty much a guarantee at the state level. There is a IHSA concussion information and sign off form. That's another form that you need to be aware of. You need to sign it. Concussions are one of the most serious injuries that we have on campus. And of course with soccer, that is the most frequent uh, injury that we have. So concussion, that needs to be signed off just so you understand that what a concussion is and, and that we are, the coaches all have to have certain training and we will monitor that. And if we have any inkling that, that your daughter has a concussion, then we will automatically bench them. We will withhold them from activities until we make sure that they are not concussed. So you need to have that form filled out. And then there's also a transportation form. Transportation form, we will be practicing at Blackaby Park like we've done the last few years. So there's many times that the upper class juniors, seniors will be able to, to uh, transport the freshmen and sophomores to that location. And the transportation form is just basically so that you know that your daughter might be traveling with someone else from the high school facility to our practice facility, which again will be at Blackerby Park, which is right next to the Susnick Center. So the transportation form, that's just one of those legal documents for insurance that we need to have on file. All of that is in a packet like this. It's in the main office. I have some here in my classroom. Uh, every form is stapled together. It's pretty much everything that you need to sign is right in that packet. So again, 
if there's something that your daughter is missing, I will make sure that I get that to you, uh, make sure that that gets turned into the main office. Okay, legal forms. The next one, our Clue Mystery Dinner Theater. This is our approved fundraiser. Things are really rocking and rolling with our Clue Mystery Dinner Theater. It's going very well. We have it scheduled for March 5th. March 5th is on a Saturday. We do have practice scheduled that morning, but we're just basically gonna be decorating, getting things ready for the afternoon, bringing in the raffle baskets, those kinds of things, and then we'll have our Clue Mystery Dinner Theater that night, again, on March 5th. With basket raffles and with desserts, I am asking parents, uh, families, to kinda join together, put a basket together, um, and then bring that to the night's activity. That's one of our additional fundraisers that we can do through the night. So if you want to combine with another family or two, by all means do that. Just communicate with each other. If you want to chip in um, and make your baskets together, that's perfectly acceptable. Same thing with desserts. We're asking the night of the Clue Mr. Dinner Theater that the desserts are already packaged, very much like what the band and choir does with their concerts whenever they have their bake sales. Go ahead and package those. We're gonna put a blanket price of 50 cents on those. So package those accordingly. Make sure that uh, everything's done, ready to go, and that way we don't have to worry about cutting and, and serving and all those kinds of things with the desserts uh, that night. Along with the desserts, I am asking that you include some of the ingredients. We have some people that do have allergies, so we need to make them aware of what's inside the desserts so that we don't have any problems with health or allergies, okay? Tickets are now available. I have uh, a few more tickets in my in my bottom drawer here, so if your daughter needs more tickets or if you haven't received a ticket package yet, make sure your daughter comes in and sees me. I will sign them out. We need to make sure that those get turned in by March 3rd. That's gonna be our, our final count. The money has to be in. We've been talking with several parents. Um, I'm only ordering food based on the money that's turned in on March 3rd. We're not making any promises. I don't want someone to say, well, I've got you know $200 that's gonna come in on that night. I need that money on the third, and that's gonna be the determining factor of our numbers for the banquet, for the meal, okay? Not the banquet, I don't know why I said that. The Clue Mystery Dinner Theater is gonna be based on the money that's actually in hand in our account, okay? And then I also do need those extra tickets to be turned in before uh, we have the event on player expectations. Event. Player expectations, again, we're gonna use the link that's on our document. That takes you to the team webpage and it takes you right to the link that is associated with our player expectations. On that, you'll see that it has uh, very specific things on there. It's talking about the clothes. Make sure that your daughter is prepared with all of the clothing and shoes. Bring in water bottle if they need to be wrapped. We talk about attendance in here. There's a explanation of what unexcused and excused is. Asking the girls to have their soccer balls. Make sure communication is good and consistent and direct. Uh, we don't allow girls to communicate through someone else. Uh, so if a girl is sick or something during the school day, um, parent, you can contact us, send me a text or something like that. What I really don't want is another girl to be uh, the messenger. You know, I wanna hear it directly. Um, and I absolutely understand if it's a sickness kind of a thing, I'm, I'm very flexible, that's fine, um, but uh, I don't like to get messages secondary or secondhand, those kinds of things, so make sure that's direct. Um, profanity, there's some ex explanation of there. Professionalism, what that means, listening, hustle, sportsmanship, um, making sure that we're listening to the coaches. And then phones, electronic devices, we, we don't have that during practices. We don't do, use all the social media during practice for obvious reasons. And then there's some things about games, game attendance, uh, there's designations for all the players during the games, home and away. Players are required to have the correct uniform, so if they're not properly prepared, then they may not get to play that game. Varsity players uh, do have stats taken for their performances. We keep offense and defensive stats. We use a lot of electronic tools to help us, um, to help us keep track of those stats, okay? So player expectations, that's posted. The next thing. Game day, I'll talk about some specific game day expectations. First of all, parents, we need help with concession stands. We need people that are willing to grill, uh, whether you bring something from your house that you've already grilled and we can keep it warm in the concession stand, or if you wanna fire up the grill 
on site, that's okay. There's a location that we can do that. It's kind of protected from everybody. That's perfectly fine. But we need some volunteers to help run the concession stand. We do have uh, the National Honor Society does come and they help. They give out the food. They take the money, those kinds of things. But we need some parents just to kind of be the babysitters, to be the adults on site. And again, if you are willing to do that, then we'll make sure that like if your daughter's playing JV, then we'll assign you for the varsity game. If your daughter's a varsity player, then we'll assign you for the JV game so you can actually watch the game that your daughter is a part of. Games are not optional. I want to make sure that everybody knows that. Uh, we, we have our schedule. It's already posted. It's on our Athletics 2000 webpage, which again is linked on our team website and it's also on our school website, that Athletics 2000. That's where you can get a nice clean printout of that. I'll also make those available. But you need to be checking your schedules now. Clear your schedules for all of our game things. And remember, this is a spring sport, so we do have a little bit of flexibility because we have weather. Uh, if it's a rain out or the early part of our season, we can get snow and ice and those kinds of things that'll change some of the practice times, locations, uh, and then especially whenever we get to games, those might change too. So we got to understand, the games are not optional. I understand some people do have work schedules, but you need to be, um, you know, talking with your employers and letting them know you got a season at hand and you've got to be uh, you got to be focused on the season and be ready to play if there's some flexible things. Home games and away games, both of those kind of say the same thing, that there are roles assigned to the players, so we'll make sure that we rotate those responsibilities. Varsity players will have some things to do during the JV games. JV players will have things to do during the varsity games, so it's a whole package. Practices is the next item on our list. Practices, players need to be ready for all weather conditions. Again, spring sport, we don't know sometimes. It looks great in the morning, but in the afternoon it starts to rain and we can't get out onto the field, so we have to make uh, arrangements with the other sports to get on the, the basketball courts, uh, try to use some of the gym facilities, the hallways, whatever. We have to be very flexible. You gotta be ready for everything. So you gotta be ready to be outside. So that means sometimes layers. The magic number is 34 degrees. If it's 34 degrees or higher, we will try to be outside unless it's super muddy or something like that. But 34 degrees, I know that's super cold, but we've done that before. Uh, we get outside, we try to um, get out there and get used to the weather because we could essentially be playing in it, especially in the early part of our season. So if you're at 34 degrees or higher, you make sure that you have several layers and you're ready to be outside uh, in the cold. Have water bottles with you. We don't take team water breaks. Just have your water bottle with you. Take it to the locations wherever your, your training session is. You might be in small sided games. You might be doing individual drills. Have your water bottle close so you can just take a drink whenever you need to. I'm, I'm not stopping the whole practice and letting everybody take a 20 minute break. We just keep going. Everything's pretty on top of each other. You go from skill to drill to large group activities. You're constantly moving, so just get those water breaks whenever you need it. Attendance. Attendance is taken every day. We monitor everything all the time. We take attendance every day. We monitor if it's unexcused or excused. We see if you're tardy or if you're absent for different things. And there are some discipline steps for non-attendance. And I know some people are involved with uh, musicals and we've got a couple people I already know have doctor's appointments. We'll make those arrangements. We'll talk to the players uh, about what to do for makeups. But uh, attendance, if you just don't show up, there's gonna be some consequences according to that. Stretching and warm-ups, the players are going to have lots of time at the front end of practice to do their stretches to get their bodies warmed up and we also do cool down sessions at the end of practices so we try to make sure that our bodies are ready to perform some difficult tasks. At the beginning of the season players are evaluated so these first two weeks we evaluate every player every day. The five coaches we will spend a lot of time with a lot of paperwork at the end of practice there are certain skills and drills that we do that we are monitoring and the coaches, we literally have a sheet. We'll all have clipboards with us the first two weeks and we have a sheet, things that we're specifically looking for and we grade each player. We combine those grades and those help make decisions not only on who's gonna be varsity versus junior varsity, who's gonna be in what positions. So to talk about that very quickly, ladies, if you have a position that you really wanna play, so if you're a defensive player, you better show some good, solid defensive types of techniques and work ethic. If you want to be midfield and, and work on possessing the ball or passing the ball and you're more of the assist person, 
then you know the skills and drills better kind of match up with what you think is best for you on the field. And same way with finishing, if you're a forward and you want to put the ball in the back of the net, then we want you to be able to be attacking the goal, putting lots of shots on the frame. Um, so again, we look at the whole package, especially those first two weeks. With the first two weeks in mind, I want to remind everybody that we are going to do something a little bit crazy this year. I, not really crazy. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Well, we've done that for five years. We've been doing the same types of things, the same types of drills, the same types of game formations, and we're not really changing our results. We haven't won a conference game in over five years. And that's a little bit disappointing whenever you look at some of the other teams in our conference that have changed coaches and their philosophies have changed and their performance has changed. And yes, we are at a little bit of a disadvantage because we don't have the solid youth programs that some of the other schools do. We don't have access within five miles of some of the indoor sports facilities. So I get it. I get that there's a little bit of that inconvenience factor. Simple fact is we've got to do what we can to maintain competitiveness. With that in mind, I did a lot of study after last season and I decided that with the player personnel that we have, we're going to use a very different format this year, a very different team shape. It's a different approach, different mental approach, different physical approach. And it quite simply is just going to take time to learn it. So that's why I said these first two weeks, we want to make sure that we totally bombard the girls with lesson after lesson after lesson, instruction after instruction. And I've developed a program. I've got it approved by Mr. Tomser. He said it's real similar to a two-a-day type of approach. It's broken up. It's not a solid five hours of work on the field. It is broken up. We have opportunities for the girls to do their own individual types of training. That's the 100,000 ball touches and some of the weightlifting things. We have time for them to do small-sided games where they're working with three or four, up to eight other people, and they're working on different skill and drill types of things in that. And then the coaches really take a hold of the girls for about an hour and a half, from 5 to 6.30. All the coaches, we have very specific things that we're looking for, and that's going to be on the field. That's scrimmages. That's them getting conditioning, them getting the format, um, just the, the total package uh, for about an hour and a half. And it's going to be a lot of stop and go. It's not solid running and, and ball touch and jumping and all that stuff for an hour and a half. That's a lot of instruction, too. There'll be periods of time where we let them play, but there's gonna be lots of times, especially in this first couple of weeks, where it's stop, it's instruct, it's practice what we're talking about, and then go practice it again, go do it again. And then from 6.30 to 8, there's a little bit of transition time where they get from Blackaby Field back into this classroom, and there's gonna be literally a class. They're gonna be sitting in this classroom using this same whiteboard, we're gonna be talking about formations and shape and player roles and what we're looking for. And then the next day's practice is where we um, institute and encourage and we practice what we learned the afternoon before, okay? So yes, I am asking for it to be until eight o'clock each night, those first two weeks. After the first two weeks, then yes, we'll go back to the, we'll be done about five o'clock, five, 10, uh, as long as the activity bus needs to pick us up we can do that but we're looking at that five o'clock closing time after the first two weeks the only thing i need two things transportation we need to make sure that our girls are able to get transported home after that eight o'clock dismissal time sometimes uh, depending on where we are most of the time we'll be here on this campus at eight o'clock uh, if there's a change in that make sure that you're following my twitter account and i'll let you know if there's a change but most of the time we'll be on this campus eight o'clock I need parents that are willing to take some of the other players home who do not have a ride consistently. And then two, food and drink. Uh, I am asking, and this is on the list here, for parents to volunteer to bring snack type of food, whether it's fruits and vegetables, um, there's high grain types of cereals, peanut butter types of things, uh, grapes are really good. And I'll send out a list of really good recovery types of foods. That's what we really want uh, parents to volunteer to bring in. If players don't want something from a parent, then I'm just asking the players to make sure they bring something so that there's a recovery food uh, accessible to them. They can eat while we have our instructional time. They can eat, we can talk, and we can use the board. Uh, snacky types of foods, that's fine. It's perfectly fine. 
Okay, with that, I don't think there's anything else that I need to cover on this video. If you have any questions, feel free to text me, feel free to email me. Uh, you know that I'm very available. We start our season this coming up Monday, so it's just a, a handful of days, and then we're all going to be together. So I'm excited again, once, once again, for this season. Um, I can't wait to get started, and I hope that you are willing to help us out, be that support that we need as parents, help us with the concession stands, help us with food items. There's some ideas that I'll be sending out through email, uh, so make sure that you're checking email pretty consistently. With that said, I did almost forget that. There are some parents that want to be added to the email list. That's perfectly fine. I send out group messages all the time. So if you are not receiving messages and maybe your daughter just doesn't communicate with you, maybe it's sometimes I send messages throughout the day and your daughter just can't communicate with you because they're in a classroom and it's hard to communicate. Whatever the reason, if you want your email added to the main list, send that to me. Again, my email's on the top of that list. Send that to me and I'll make sure that I add your email to the contact list. All right, with that, have a great afternoon, and we'll see you on the soccer field soon.